Yeah, sla li some Life Aquatic would be nice. It's a very healing movie. You, of course, there's always a little bit of... I don't remember too much nastiness in Life Aquatic. There aren't, like... Teenage boys fucking having a, a pseudo-sexual relationship with a grown-ass woman. There wasn't anything... There's a, Wes Anderson movies usually have elements of uh, an alternative lifestyle. Uh, anyway, whatever. He wouldn't have been able to get the movies made hadn't he had that in there. Hey, nothing personal. Anyway, Wes Anderson is the best. He's He makes the best movies. I'm sorry. You know, I don't know if people enjoy them like they used to. They've been around for a long time now, since the 90s. But I don't really know if we're going to keep talking about m movies. Wes Anderson, Tortured Beauty. I don't know what that means. He tortured beauty. Metaphor for puberty? I mean, hey, I don't know. I, what do I know? I don't know. I just got to see... Um, I just got to see Moonrise Kingdom again. I haven't seen it in many years, and I really... I didn't like it when I saw it, but... I got to see it again. I wasn't in a Wes Anderson sort of a, a style, you know? You know. It's just, I just, I find his movies cleansing. I find his movies cathartic. I find his movies filling and um, split and wonderful. I just do. You know, you can subtract all the Hollywood, whatever the hell, you know, blah, blah, blah. It is what it is. He, he is just ha the keenest eye in the whole industry, maybe since forever. The keenest tone builder. He's a very good tone builder. Uh, but, you know, he's the French New Wave and the theater and all that. You know, you can, you can get that stuff, but you just... You gotta sort of know how to get movies made in Hollywood, I guess. Whatever. It's just... They're so good. They're just good. I really enjoy them. I just watched, uh... God, I can't even believe it. I was just gonna say something insane, like I was alone talking to myself. Um, the uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox. Again, I haven't seen that in ten years or ten years plus since it came out. I went to the, a, a theater in the area and saw that with Power Dave. You know, you know, I, there's, you know, hmm. now that I think of it. There, there are no movies that I've seen more in theaters than Wes Anderson's. Now that I think of it, because it's the only, it's the only movies that come out that are, that are actually, as long as I'm not sort of checked out completely, they're, they're noteworthy. A Wes Anderson movie is a noteworthy release, not like anything else that you see that's not noteworthy at all. Anything at all. You listen to Kanye West's album. <laughs> I, I bet that's really good. I bet it's really noteworthy. But how can you compare that sort of music to uh, cinema like that? I guess that's not really an apt comparison. But what I mean is, it's it's still noteworthy enough to where I actually go see those movies. I actually go see them in the theaters. You know, I saw French Dispatch with Eric a, a few months ago. I mean, when the hell's the last time I went to go see a movie with Eric, me and him? <laughs> I don't know, I don't think ever. And then before that, the Anderson years back with Dave, it's just interesting. And I saw um, the the train one. I also saw the train one in the theater with uh, Keith and Eric. The uh, Darjeeling Limited. So. And also Life Aquatic five times or something around there. Back in the day. Oh, six. When I, when I used to enjoy movies quite a bit. Those are some times. The Life Aquatic was as good as The Matrix to keep you coming back to the theater to enjoy that experience. It's the only other movie. Ma the Matrix and Life Aquatic were, were very, very, very fun to see in the theaters. And, you know, also, I've seen it a handful of times, too, with Star Wars Episode One. But it's it's mainly not... I mean, I, I, I don't like Star Wars. and uh, But I do like Episode One. And it was, it was just, uh, it was a many different things. It was noteworthy because it, the, a Star Wars movie hadn't come out for many years, and this was before, sort of, Ronald McDonald took the reins of the Disney franchise or whoever, some sort of a cartoon freak. Bosco. Oh, fucking Bosco took over the goddamn 
Star Wars franchise, then it turned into something a little bit different. Or, or, or did it? Or is it just the same thing just years later? You know, I don't know. Do I think The Matrix still holds up, Leo? It's the, it's the greatest, it's the greatest action movie that's, the, by far, that's ever been made. By far. Nothing comes close to it. There's no movie. There's no movie that comes close to The Matrix. It's the absolute best. Grand Budapest is also another one that I have to see again. That I really wasn't in the mood for it. Or maybe I was in the bag. Um, during the old apartment days. But, uh, yeah, that would be a good one again. Um, and it makes me want to watch The Grand Hotel also. I believe that's the one with Al, jo <laughs> Al Jolson. You remember that one, The Boys Will Be Boys? Can you believe it's been years since we've seen some of these? It's, it's It hits me hard sometimes. Like, hard cock, you know what I mean? That you just can't turn away from. Matrix is un, is unbelievable. <laughs> uh, I guess what I wanted to say, what the hell was I saying about the f Wes Anderson, um, the Grand Hotel? Oh, I was just rambling about how it's been years. <laughs> anyway, it's just hitting me hard again. Four years. Four years, you know. Aronofsky? I don't know, not anymore. Junior. I mean, maybe I'll watch Tree of Life if you can stomach Hugh Jackman's uh, Brian Singer airplane histrionics. I mean, I, li I like Hugh Jackman. It is what it is. It's just even though the guy looks fucking... The guy looks... I don't even know. I, if I saw him, if I was walking, uh, coming up to him on the fucking street, I'd cross the fucking street. If I saw his fucking smile and eyes coming at me, I'd fucking... I'd be put... I'd, I'd be put... Stuffing my hands up my fucking ass to keep them out of it. <laughs> no, Bimwit, I won't watch Antichrist. I won't do it. Lars von Trier, I don't see I don't see his movies. I'll watch his TV, but I don't I don't typically watch his movies unless I want to get cornholed. You know what I'm saying? Unless I want to get raped when I'm watching his movie. Unless I want to fucking tear my sack open with a scalpel and flip it inside out and ha hang it like a jellyfish puppet. You know? Something stupid like that. Something nasty. Disgusting. Anyway, Aronofsky's movies don't ex- I mean... I'm not saying they don't hold up. I, I'm saying they don't hold up for me in that... Just the, the subject matter in them, I kind of don't even feel like seeing it anymore. Like, I, I put on an Aronofsky movie, you see freaking heroin injections in the, the fucking- in the dick. You see for, uh, slave prostitution to get drugs, all different kinds of heinous fucking prostitution. You see sl slave work, not slave work, but fucking, what do you call it? What do you call the chain, chain gang, puking drugs. A mother goes insane before your eyes and then, then she fucking dies. You know what? <laughs> I'm, I'm not into that shit anymore. I'll put on fucking faces of death if I want to be around that. You know what I mean? Gabe, Mother was awful, you know? The subject matter, pretty brutal, but the tone of Mother was like nothing I've ever seen. It was like something that was good. But there was some stuff in it that's kind of... The, the subject matter is too dark for... I mean, you don't want to think about that stuff too much. It's like Full Metal Alchemist, you know? It's like a, a, a sort of Philosopher's Stone creation. I mean, that's what the movie was about. It was the creating of a Philosopher's Stone. But that's- it was just dark, but I saw that in the- in the theater with Andrew, and we had a good time. We were laughing at Jennifer Lawrence's performance. It's fine, whatever. Do what you can do. But the tone of the movie, especially Ed Harris, and how he got- Remember how- how fucked sexual he got by the end of the movie? It was fucking- oh, it's good. You know what I mean? Um, but there was- and- and also the- when the riot death house was happening in the interior of the house, and it looked like a fucking outdoor riot inside, that it was on I couldn't even believe my eyes. It was crazy. But of course, there's the toll of watching freaking soul destruction. I mean, you gotta pay a toll to watch that sort of thing. But his other movies, I mean, Pie is probably fun. I haven't seen it in many years. Uh, Tree of Life, I thought it was interesting. Uh, Ellen Burstyn, you know, her The Insane Mother also, is from a really good school of acting, I guess. I guess you could say that. She's in a, at a, a higher tier, much higher tier than most. But, uh, it's, it's just insane. It's just insane. Tree of Life isn't Aronofsky? Oh, I mean, um... What am I thinking of? 
What am I thinking? The one with Hugh Jackman. The Fountain. The Fountain. The Fountain. Yeah, I didn't watch Tree of Life. I decided against it. But The Fountain was, uh, I don't know, it was kind of, you look at it now and it's sort of crazy, but it's just interesting. Nathrakis, I figured, what's up? I figured Tree of Life is hell, too. It just, I don't, I don't know, Terrence Malick, that's Badlands, right? I mean, I've, I don't know if, probably, I don't know. I just watch Wes Anderson movies, mostly. You know, Badlands was pretty, pretty twisted. But anyway, you know, sometimes you feel like movies, sometimes you don't. But it was nice to see the some uh, stop motion again. Not many people do stop motion. And Isle of the Dogs, I have not seen. Yeah, Bim, Anderson is the only movies that I really watch. Wes Anderson movies are the only movies that I watch. It sounds crazy, but it's the truth. Ever since the the nineties, they've he's ma he's really made he's the the best filmmaker of that of our time. You know, he really is. Who else is out there? Was it like, I don't know. I don't. Who knows? I've seen some movies in the theater. You guys remember laughing? I was laughing. I went to go see. Was it Wind River with Jeremy Renner and uh, Ashley Olsen or one of the Olsen Frank Olsen, I believe. Anybody remember Frank Olsen? Um, and, I, and I was watching it, I'm like, this is, it's a, it's a, a very unremarkable movie. I saw it. I like Native American stuff, or whatever you want to call them. I really like that a lot. I, I really, really like it. And I hit up Andrew. I was like, ah, oh, man, I was like, the movie was, the movie was okay. I was like, did you like it a lot? He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, Wind River. He's like, what are you talking about? I was like, you told me to go see it. He's like, no, I didn't. I like, oh, my God. Uh, anyway, I did also see another movie at his behest. The uh, was it Good Times, the one with Pattinson and oh, you know whatever the bank robbery one. It was interesting, but it was just too stressful. Like I just I wanted to smoke crack in the theater just to get through it. it you know what I mean? But it, it it was interesting. It was interesting. And and then after I saw that, I knew that Robert Pattinson was a very good actor. You know, there's something sort of silly about him. We should watch Twilight. Tyler Sheridan? What, what does he do, Terry? Hey, what's going on? What's up, Epiphany? Everyone, how you living? Dead man, Johnny Depp? No, Obama. I haven't seen Obama's drug dealer. Choom Gang gets his head caved in with a fucking hammer. <laughs> Interesting. Um, uh, what the fuck was I saying about that? Oh, Dead Man. That's uh, that's the 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 Robert Mitchum's last movie, right? The one with the the gunpoint gunpoint head. When the, the, the front man from Butthole Surfers has a gun to a girl's head. Remember that? I, I only remember the first 20 minutes of it. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna wait 15 years before I watch this again. You remember- that's the only- I remember that very clearly. I was like, oh fuck, this is crazy. You wanna know what my favorite movies are that you show me? What are your favorite movies that I've shown you? Gallipoli. Gallipoli? <laughs> Pete Weir- Pete Weir is before Wes Anderson, but Pete Weir makes the best movies. The ones that hit hardest. Splendid. Oh. An Excalibur, uh, Wolf, not Wolfgang Peterson, John Borman, Zardoz, John Borman, fuck, Excalibur is the best. You see, people don't know the good directors anymore. Sicario, are you, uh, for real? I don't know, it was too violent, man, it was too sickening. I couldn't, it was interesting, it looked like a video game, it looked like, you know. But that's, that's something so good. Yeah, Witness, Taxman, we gotta watch Witness together. In there. Witness is so good. Gallipoli is... I, when I saw that, I screamed. And that was one of the movies that I, that I was like, ah, I couldn't even believe it was happening. It, that movie hits hard. It's a, the only bro movie there is, other than Thelma and Louise. Last Wave by Peter Weir is good. Locutus, okay, Last Wave. It's just Peter Weir is so good, it's unbelievable. The General. Okay. Lesson on Borman from the 90s called The General. All right. I'll try to remember that. Mike Lee, Naked. Oh, my God. Um, I don't even know. Should I tell the story of when I first watched that? I remember I was watching that in the season one days of World Peace, and it's me and Joel. Uh, me and Trapped. We're, he's a maniac. We're, and he's like... Uh, you know, he's like, uh, he, he's got pretty good taste in movies. He's got pretty good taste in movies. So he, you know, so he's got a, he's got a girlfriend he brings over. 
I'm like, yeah, let's go. Let's watch a movie. We'll put on what you want. I'm drinking champagne. I got it in an ice bucket, okay? I'm, I I drink a bottle of champagne before we even start the movie, okay? Let me put it that way. So so we get we put on the movie. It, he, put, he puts it on. A little bit of credits. That's David Thewlis. Um, freaking Remus Lupin. He's raping a woman in an alleyway on a dumpster. At night. And I'm like... I'm like, yo, man. And then, but that's, and then the rest of the movie is absolutely psycho. It was a crazy night, man. I couldn't even believe it. It's a good, a good movie to put on. Yeah, the dumpster does really make it. <laughs> no, you see, weaponized. I, I wrote a little bit about that and how to bomb. Wes Anderson's support of um, Roman Polanski. And Angelica Houston. I don't know if it made it in the book. I actually don't remember, but I remember I was on that back in the day. I was on a lot of that stuff, like the the Nambla stuff. I was sort of I was on top of that. But what's the point? I mean, it's kind of common knowledge, and no one gives a fuck. So I don't even talk about it anymore. You know what I mean? No one even cares. So I'm like, ah, fuck. I learned I learned years ago that no one gives a shit, no matter what you do. I'm like, ah, fuck. Who gives a shit? Do you know? I I mean, I need, we shouldn't even. Re it's too dark to even think about that shit. It's a fucking nightmare. I want to think about it. That's when you start. That's when you start looking into Alfred Kinsey, the the designer of all our sexual education in the United States since the '60s or whatever. And then you're like, "Oh man, that's straight up fucking Babylonian." Anyway, enough about that. It's too dark. Yeah, I remember that. Steel didn't uh, didn't Bill Condon do uh, do that one too? The guy that did Powder, remember him? He has a sort of sort of special proclivities, this sort of royal proclivities, I think. Anyway, enough about that. His interesting choices of his subject matter, I thought, is very, very youthful. He has a very he live, he sees the world through a very youthful lens. I was watching a very youthful episode of Deep Space Nine last night when Jake. He was uh, a, a, like, a, like a teenager, like a f 13, 14, 15 year old guy. He's dating, he's dating a grown woman who is uh, uh, a waitress at a cocktail bar. And he's having dinner with his father. And they're talking about how they're dating. We were like, oh my god. Oh my god. Hologram? Did I fall asleep? What are you talking about, Ball there? She wasn't a hologram. She was a Dabo girl. That shit, man, that shit was fucking killed the mood a little bit. <laughs> Dating Dolly Parton. Can't even get close to her face. Because of her rack. Because of her two pillows that she's got under her shirt. Movies are the worst. <laughs> I hear you. I, I'm not gonna lie, man. I'm not gonna lie. In saying, in saying that they're not, they are. Anyway, I was raving about something that I'm really not going to bring up because it's kind of too dark. People like to talk about uh, Stanley Kubrick movies, his most recent one. People like to talk about some of the things in there, but there are some things in there that nobody talks about. And I'm going to keep it that way. But me and Joel were fucking... First of all, we were crying laughing, and at the same time, we were fucked up by it. Just some of the intro- some of the certain- Some of the certain concepts. Some of the sexual concepts that we were for- we were sort of discussing. But it kind of messed us up a little bit, but it also made us laugh really hard. You know? How can you not? How the hell can you not? How the hell can you not? You know? Anyway, enough about that. Enough about that. But we had a good laugh about it. It was very interesting, and it led to some very in an interesting universe. It led to a very... Uh, the, the, the formation of an interesting universe that was waiting for a long time, but really didn't sort of... It didn't click, and it didn't... I didn't get it done, or bust my ass to get it done, you know? And then we started cer certain. Uh, I went down a certain path with Joel, and things kind of. There's a lot of things that kind of click in sometimes in with with extreme comedy with certain individuals. But it was it was sort of instrumental in actually believing something so heinous 
could actually be worked on with joy and laughter and put out and maybe be instructive in a certain in a certain regard. Let me just put it that way. I don't know how else to put it. Anyway, I don't know how many people grapple with that sort of things that they write. If things are too heinous, you actually can't even tell people about it and you can't even publish it. You know what I mean?